What's up guys, drone worship in your face. You guys know I like to try to save you money and I also like to kind of call the companies out on silly things that they do and this is one of those things that Chasing Innovation has done to you guys that I think is just silly. So I wanted to show you a bypass to get past having to purchase an actual controller from Chasing Innovation for 99 to 100 extra dollars. So if you buy the drone, if you buy the ROV platform, the Dory, they expect you to go buy a hundred dollar transmitter if you don't like using your phone well i'm going to show you how to bypass that with a seven to ten dollar bluetooth controller for android or ios today i'm going to show you how to use that with your chasing dory so you're going to need two apps the first app is obviously the chasing og2 app for the dory and the second app you're going to need is octopus i will put a picture of both of those right here and so that you guys can't get confused right here, right here, and then I'll show you how to set it up and how to key map your Android controller for an app designed for the Dory that was never meant to be used outside of a wire bay. So if you guys have the controller, you know, you can connect to it wirelessly, but it's only supposed to communicate. It's only supposed to communicate with the Dory controller. This third party app that I'll be presenting to you guys reads the format of the touchscreen controls. So essentially, you're going to be virtually key mapping a fake touchscreen over the top of the buttons that you want to use, and I'll show you guys how to set that up. It's actually very easy at the cost of a $10, so seven to $10 Bluetooth controller and a $5.49 app, putting your purchase at officially $15 as opposed to $99. It also gives you the option to choose any, any controller that you want to for the Android. So if you like the IPEGA classic game controllers, whatever, as long as it has Bluetooth, uh, most likely the Octopus app will be able to read it. It is a third party app and it, is, it, does, it has no affiliation or association with Chasing Innovation, but I promise you it is a fantastic app and it will make this become available to you if you choose to spend the extra $5. So without further ado, Let's get into it. I'm going to pop up the uh, Octopus app. We're going to be starting completely fresh here, and I'm going to show you how to key map for this so that you can use this with this for $15. Let's get into it. All righty, guys. All right, all right, all right. What's going on? So I have Octopus pulled up, okay? And when you first open Octopus, I'll push the back button here so I can show this to you. When you first open the Octopus app... We'll actually go back one more time. Let's see if I can clear this. We'll go back, back. Let's see here, Octopus. All right, so when I first open this up, it'll just, you won't see the chasing app. You have to push the plus button, and then you have to find the app that you want to put key mapping over the top of and then choose it, and then it puts it in My Games. Once you click on that, you're gonna to have to go through a sign-in process with Octopus. Each of you is gonna have a little different setup, but you'll click on it, it'll launch the application, and then you'll see it says connected to T3. That's my Bluetooth controller, so it recognizes my controller. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, sorry if this keeps jumping up and down, is I'm gonna hit start, but you'll notice there's a little octopus eyeballs down on the left-hand side of my corner here. I'll push start, and you'll see that those eyeballs will hide. Okay, if you look up by the connected up in the uh, almost the middle, but to your left, you'll see the eyeballs just kind of sitting there translucent in the background. If you click on those, right, that brings up the octopus menu. So what we're going to do is we're going to add key mapping for all of the touchscreen controls. And we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to go to gamepad right here. We're going to go to add a key map. Okay. And now it will save everything I do to this key map. So it knows that I'm connected to a gamepad now, and it knows that I want to do key mapping. So now I can do this, and I can hit the little plus button. So now you have the gamepad next to it. Now we're going to hit the plus button next to that. So I push plus, and we're going to add in a left analog stick. Okay, so here we go. I'll click on the screen in the background and move it to where I want it. So now we're going to put that right over here in the corner and this gives you settings how do you want this to be set do you want it to be set and hold do you want it to be slide so you see how the fingers like sliding and then it's disappearing that's not what you want you want to do hold push and hold so we're gonna do hold we're gonna click on that and hit OK so that one's good we're gonna push the plus button again and now I'm gonna do right analog stick and we're gonna drag that down into the corner 
Okay, we're gonna make sure this one is set correctly too. Now this one's on repeat. We also need this one to be on hold. So we'll set it as hold and we'll hit okay. Now we'll come back up, we'll push the plus button and we'll add an A key. The A key actually lets you choose any key that you want to. You can do multi-press function, D-pad, you can do whatever you want. Just follow the directions closely. This is very simple. So we're gonna push the A, see where it says key, we'll push A. And now up at the corner, you see a little blinking line. We're gonna take that right down to where the light is on the touchscreen controls and we'll put it right over the top of it to make sure that we got it dead on. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see with my finger in the way. Grr, it doesn't have to be perfect, that's close enough. All right, so now I'm gonna set my left lower, uh, left trigger as the lights on button. So I just click it once, so we'll turn on the transmitter because it just shut off accidentally. It says it's reconnected, I'll click it once. You see how it says LT? Okay, so inactivity actually turned off the transmitter or the controller, that's okay, we're good to go. All right, so now we're gonna set up a button for the high, low, start and power. So we'll go to plus again. We'll come up here, we'll set another A key, and we're gonna drop that right on the power button. We're gonna set the power button as the A button on my controller, so A. Okay, and then we'll add another button. So we'll push the plus, we'll click A, we'll drag that down to L. We'll set that as X on my button, and then we'll come here, do it again. Until you have everything that you want mapped, just keep choosing the buttons of choice. So now we're going to do B as high speed. So now we have both analog sticks connected. We have LT as my lights. And now we're going to drag this other one that I created over here to the start camera button. And we're going to tap it. And then we're going to hit R. So now my right upper stick will, will start a recording. And then we'll push plus. We'll add one more key. We'll bring that over to the picture button right here and we'll drop that as the lower trigger okay so I pretty much have everything mapped that I want to use and I can save that profile so when I go up to here it is save this profile now you can name this profile whatever you want but when you leave this app right it will save this you paid for the premium version of it it will save this so now when I wanna I've memorized my controls pretty much I know what I want to do I'm gonna go ahead and push the uh, check button that saves it and now I have full access of my controls as you can see I can use the I can use it just like I normally would with touchscreen controls but I can actually use my controller now and you can actually change the translucence if you want to if you don't want the buttons to be so sticky like if you don't want them to stick out that much right I actually don't like how far I drag this in the corner so we'll correct that we'll come over here and we'll just drag that a little bit more out of the way and then we'll hit OK and now it's more centered I also don't like where I set the, you see how easy this is to use? I also don't like where I put that one, so we'll move that one up here and then I'll hit OK. There we go, now they're pretty much in alignment. So if I want to start a recording, I know that I can see where it says RT, LT, RB. I click RB, boom, starts a recording. Click it again, stops. Take a picture, turn my lights on, turn my lights off, right? Arm the motors, disarm the motors, right? High, low, so we're starting off in low. And we know that B is high, so there you go. I can switch in and out just by clicking on the buttons. Very simple to do once you have it down. So I hope that was an easy tutorial for you guys. Remember, there is a little sign up involved. You have to sign up with Octopus. You have to purchase the app as a premium version. So your entire purchase to set all this up literally is $15. That's to buy the controller and to, to purchase the app. It's about $15.50, or if you can find a cheaper transmitter or controller, whatever you guys wanna do. Octopus has been around for like five years for, for virtual key mapping for games that are not compatible with controllers. That's what it was designed for. It's just interesting that it works for a lot of the drone stuff that you have. So if you have, this would work for a, a Wi-Fi operated drone on your phone if you wanted to, you could use this. You can set up as many profiles as you want to for different drones. It does not matter as long as you can access the app using octopus it opens it as a third party setting which allows so basically this is all running inside third party so very interesting stuff i hope that helped you guys if you have any further questions feel free to uh, drop a comment below i will put the uh, download link for android and ios for octopus uh, in the description of this video if this video helped you guys I hope it did I hope I saved you some money I'm sure the company is gonna hate me for making this video because I'm taking money out of their pocket but literally 
when I got the Dory, I was like, man, there has to be options available. And I only saw one video and it was never explained how any of this worked. The guy just pulled out a controller and started using it and there was no explanation. If you go anywhere on YouTube, you will not find anyone else that has shown how to use a Bluetooth controller with your Dory. Okay, now there's a video out there. I hope this helps you guys. I hope moving forward you 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 use this how it was meant to be used and you try this with other drones and the best thing about this is when i'm done i can still use this as a regular game controller for my cell phone right i can still connect this and play playstation portable games on my phone nintendo 64 this thing doubles as 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 just awesome it's awesome if you've never used this before it's awesome all right guys don't forget to smash that like button if you like uh what i do uh if you want some future content click the notification bell and if you want to just follow everything that i do go ahead and push that subscribe button i won't hate you for it so all right guys i'll catch you on the flip man drone worship i'm out toodaloo